All right, we're live. Thank you, everyone, for joining us to another episode of the Independent Academy podcast, the place where we have conversations surrounding technology, finance, philosophy, and everything you need to be to become more independent in today's world. We have a very special guest today, the founder of the Store Network, which is a place, a marketplace to interact with both physical and digital goods and the connection between them, which I'm sure we're going to get much more into it after our conversation. Uh, I met Josiah in the Sydney blockchain event. And after listening to him speak about um, all these new technologies and how they are converging and how he's thinking about uh, connecting a lot of them, I thought he would be a very, very exciting guest for us to know more about not only all these new technologies, but also how they start to connect with each other and how this is creating new opportunities for entrepreneurs looking to launch their own ideas into the world. So Josiah, thank you so much for, for joining us. And if you want, we can start with a little bit about your background and how you got started with this store. Yeah, sure. And I, thanks very much. Um, yeah. So like, I've always been an entrepreneur. I've always had a business since like, you know, I was a kid. Um, and yeah, I think like what happened was I dabbled in crypto, loved it, tried finding a way that I could do something in crypto, but didn't really, nothing really hit home yet. You know, it took a while. Um, and then it was around two and a half years ago. I was just like, you know, I've just, just got to do this. You know, like I've got ideas. Um, at the time I was in, um, central Australia mining opal, which is like a gemstone, um, in the desert. And uh, I was like, you know, I'm out here living off grid and I want to sell my product and I'd like to be self-sovereign and, you know, have my product go to my the, the end user directly, not go through like, uh, you know, platforms or webs, like, or, you know, platforms that could be shut down because I was like, mm -hmm. my journey was about, you know, how do I, you know, be um, uh, self-sovereign where I'm in control of my money and my resources. So I started building a platform to allow this to happen. Um, and yeah, this platform caught the attention of Discovery Channel um, on a series called Outback Opal Hunters. Um, and I, I just kept building. Um, I built a platform that would allow that to happen for me to sell products um, with Web3 Tech. So what we use is like um, we digitize the product and, and create a, a digital twin, um, a static digital twin. So it's it doesn't upgrade through time, but it's just like a whole bunch of information that's um, we we mint on the blockchain that represents a product. Um, and then people can buy that digital twin and that digital twin acts as a proof of purchase, like a receipt, but also depending on the asset type will depend on the utility that the product gives. So um, but this really cool product and I was like, well, you know, I'm selling shiny rocks in the middle of the desert, you know, like everyone's got a product. And what, what, what their product is, 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 I don't know, but they've got a product they want to sell and they want to be self-sovereign. Let's bring D store to the market. So everyone can participate in, in bringing their product to web three. So yes, and then we've like gone through this journey of upgrading our platform to allow it to scale and for um, new users to be onboarded and sell products and, you know, from wherever they are, whether they're in like remote regional places and they want to sell to an international market. Um, yeah. D store has that solution for people. So we're in this stage now of um, preparing for a launch. Um, and yeah, it's been such a crazy journey. Like, um, you know, we've, we've been to Japan, Sony got interested in our product. We were on a web three incubator with them, um, mm -hmm. which has been just this amazing roller coaster of like, excitement and fun um of how this like idea has just like you know just really sparked a lot of interest from <clears throat> a lot of different people and companies um so yeah it's been it's, it's been like this amazing journey where it's gone from just you know concept through to where we are now that's really the product yeah yeah it's, it seems so so crazy to go from uh mining opals to building a web3 crypto platform like uh do you do you do the did, did you have to do the coding yourself have you always been in tech or 
how, how, how do you go <clears throat> from mining opals to building the platform? Yeah, well, I guess like um, as an entrepreneur, there's you have the entrepreneurial spirit, and in that spirit, you you just find ways to break through different problems. So at the time, mm -hmm. I'd made a bit of money in crypto, so I utilized that to hire a developer. Mm. And uh, then me and James, he's our lead de de developer. We've been working like together for two years. So I do all biz dev and uh, partnerships and like uh, directional type activities. And then James, he does the coding. So yeah, well, I I think that that is very good for our listeners to hear because I I know that a lot of them they they are not tech savvy they don't know how to code they don't know how to do all this stuff so it's it's great to see people like you that are showing that you you don't necessarily need to know how to build a platform yourself if you have the idea and you're resourceful enough to get the resources and connect with the right people you can actually bring all these ideas to life and you can still participate in the space even if you're not uh, developing or writing the actual code so just I think like a, a lot of our listeners may not entirely know what the crypto space is about and not sure on what why they should even pay attention to it. So I want I want you to ask you about like what do you see in terms of opportunities in the space or how should people think about crypto in order to help them achieve their goals? I don't know if you have any insight on on that. Yeah. Um, well, the whole world is going to crypto. And even though that might sound a bit crazy, but like right now we've got all the governments, they're all got plans of going into digital currency. Um, then a lot of these plans um, don't necessarily bring the freedoms that we're used to when it comes to uh cash and being self-sovereign so we're going through this massive shift um so i i think that everyone needs to start learning about um the power of being self-sovereign and what it means to own your own wealth um and just how what the technology has to offer so that once you get in society and provide a solution To those to the lag happening yeah yeah i i see uh, i i think you're you're on your end thomas is it on my end or is it on your end i i hear you breaking up a bit unfortunately hmm can you hear us josiah Okay, I'm just going to see if I... Yeah, I'm going to Yeah, I hear you fine. I just um I just see that in my video off. It might Okay, let me let me cut the background. Maybe that's maybe that's a bit too much for the for the live stream. Yeah, I'll just run with this. I just don't want. Yeah, yeah, perfect. I um, if it... I now. All right. So if you if you don't mind, um, maybe repeating that or abbreviating a little bit, because I, I I couldn't I couldn't hear you unfortunately. Okay. Uh, we seem to be experiencing some difficult technical difficulties. This is one of the the good, the bad, and the ugly of doing these kind of things live, which I love. But sometimes, sometimes you get these kinds of situations. Um, can you can you hear me? Okay.
Yeah. Okay. And yeah, I think we do have some lag between us. Um, do you want to maybe jump off and come back again? Maybe that will fix it. And I, I apologize for this. I'm happy. Can yes. um or sorry, do you do you mind uh, maybe jumping off and coming and coming back into the live? Maybe maybe that will fix it. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, I think if if I jump off, it's gonna it's gonna close. So I I'll just wait. I ap apologize everyone for the <clears throat> technical di difficulties. Unfortunately, this is something that happens, but we're gonna work through it. We're gonna see if we can um, have our conversation with Josiah, try to do it the best we can. And if not, we can always reschedule. Hopefully we won't have to, ideally. Um, again, it's the, the good, the bad, and the ugly of going live. And part, I believe, of the entrepreneurial journey and my own journey involved dealing with these kinds of situations and just maneuvering and finding a way to work around it. <clears throat> so Josiah just jumped off. He's coming back on. I'm going to continue to talk about what he saw in the crypto space that uh, made him jump all in and what the opportunities that he thinks other entrepreneurs might find as well. In our, in our journey of helping people to become more in, independent, we're trying to keep an open mind, trying to speak to everyone and figure out the best way for people to bring their ideas into the world. All right, Josiah, we have you back. Let's hope this time we can we can yeah we can have that conversation with no with no problems. All right, <clears throat> how do I sound? I think now you sound you sound much better. Okay, great, we're off. All right, so we we're trying to explain. Sorry about that, um, everyone. Yeah, we're talking about um, how to think about crypto or this whole blockchain world for entrepreneurs. That I'm sure they they all heard about it. I'm sure they all are interested in some way, shape, or form, but maybe they haven't understand what the the opportunities are that are there for them. And you are someone that saw that opportunity and it's in the middle of launching his platform generating a lot of interest by companies as big as sony so i think you're the perfect person to to ask yeah uh, i think that um because There'll be a lot of um, problems that come your way, whether it's money, uh, like resources, um, and and the challenges from people. Because someone might see a fault with your concept, and you'll have to um, identify that whether it's a valid fault or not, and. In if it is a valid fault, um, particular characteristic, that's a fault in, of your, yeah, like in, but if you've got a great idea and, uh, yeah, all the time people will, um, if you're passionate, people get around you and then that 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 passion will just yeah create movement yeah yeah definitely um i think you're you're still a little a little bit blocky but i think we got the majority of what you what you were saying 
And this this concept that you mentioned and touched a lot of uh, self sovereignty, and even us with independent academy, we call it uh, self independence. It's the same thing, and. I, I see that uh, blockchain, crypto, and all, all this technology is allowing a level of independence that it ha previously it was it was not possible. So now maybe going into more a little bit more with what you're doing with the store, you know you're working a lot with um, NFTs. So do you want to give people a brief explanation of what NFTs are, and why do you think uh, they're valuable, and what you're doing with them? Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so I see M and um, a lot of people think that it's a product, um, and that's the, there's a big difference because um, it's it's just uh, when when NFTs got launched, it was just you know an image that was you could own, um, and that's exciting, but uh, there's a lot more that to come from NFTs and just uh, simply an image. And it's a matter of just unpacking what, how we can use that technology, to, you know, um, to help improve our lives. So uh, um, we, we, that's NFT. Um, what what the, what the that it's a digital twin of the real world product. So our products are backed one to one by their digital twin, um, and and what that does is it allows for all product based information to be transferred to the buyer at the point of sale, and it acts as a, a digital receipt at the same time by default. Um, and um, this means that, you know, products can be sold in virtual spaces. It means that products can be sold, um, you know, just on normal desktop platform um, websites. And it means that the way we, we integrate uh, connected to it means that products can be sold in real life. So um, the technology is amazing. And, you know, I think this next, you know, uh, crypto bull run that's coming is going to really showcase um, what people have been working on during the bear market. Because um, I know that, you know, we've been very quiet and a lot of other projects have been quite quiet. So, so I'm excited to see what what comes when, um, you know, this, uh, this bull run starts kicking off. Yes, yes. Uh, <clears throat> definitely. It, it it, it's always said that the bear markets are for building so that once the the bull market comes comes around and that's where users start to pay attention and start to look for the real use cases and that's when we we will see what people have been building all this time in in silence in in their in their own teams and I am very excited to see like real use cases because that's something that's been missing in the in in the space most of the bull of the bull runs are generally tend to be more about speculation or about um selling the idea of something instead of the the actual concrete use case and i am i'm excited to know more about this store because if I understood correctly from the presentation you did on uh, Blockchain Sydney, it's 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 a marketplace that anybody can use, and like maybe you can go a little bit more into how this store actually works and what would be for the end user the benefit from like using this store in, instead of using a Web two platform like I don't know Amazon or a Facebook marketplace maybe. Yeah, so um, on our journey, we're still discovering what it all looks like. But what we've built is a, a platform where it's 100% crypto, it's 100% um, Web3 tech. Um, there's limitations with this because uh, a lot of people have, you know, um, you know, US dollars or Japanese yuan or whatnot, and on ramps is a bit of a, a friction point. But um, essentially, what 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 it means is is that as by selling a product, you're earning 
um, cryptocurrencies on the chain that you mint the product on. So, so the moment we're on a few chains, um, we're on um, in the Polkadot ecosystem. So we're on both Kusama and uh, A-Star, which is a, uh, a blockchain um, parachain of Polkadot. And uh, and another one called Metaverse Network, sorry, three chains. Um, so you earn the native currency. It's pegged to a US dollar price that you nominate. Um, and yeah, you dis you sell the product and then dispatch the product to the customer. Uh, you get a notification that the product sold, just like any e-commerce platform. And then you dispatch the product. Um, we have uh, drop shipping integration. So if you've got a whole bunch of products that are the same, and you want to sell, you know, multiple units, um, like uh, hoodies, jumpers, um, cups, uh, anything really, um, you can uh, automate that through our platform as well. So um, what it does is it means that any creator that wants to sell a product um, and experience behind that product, they can. Um, and we, we utilize um, multi-asset um, NFT technology so you it's not just a single image that you can um put onto you and but to create your digital twin we do um uh so one asset with multiple assets inside of it so you can have a uh, images multiple images multiple 3d files um music videos um and pdf we also have a another option for um stls which is like a 3d component for 3d printing um and and what this means is like that all that information gets transferred to the buyer um, when the settlement's made, the other payments made. So um, you know exactly what you bought um, and you've got all those assets that come with that product when you purchase it. That sounds pretty, pretty useful. And um, for the point of view of the end user, like you get instant settlement, which that that doesn't happen on a on a regular marketplace uh, web two store. Um, you also correct me if I'm wrong, but you will get a lot a lot less fees, right? Because of uh, it's it's all done on the blockchain, so you're pretty much yeah. Just... So it's for... yeah yeah. So Continue. then yeah, there's a lot less fees. There's um. Uh, especially when you when you consider it as an international settlement, um, so yeah, it's it, it's really good, and I think that it's going to um, uh, be something that when people realize that um, <clears throat> the utility of it, it'll start picking up a lot of traction. Um, at the moment, what happens is you know you buy something with your credit card, and you'll buy it from let's say xyz.com and you buy, um, let's say a cup, uh, you see in your bank statement that you bought, you know, a product from xyz.com, but you won't know what you purchased. I mean, with our technology, um, you'll have uh, a picture of the product next to the settlement fee. So you'll know you spent, you know, $50 or $30 or whatever it is on a, on a you know, a product um and you know exactly when and who you bought it from so uh this is really great because you know you can do automated accounting it brings up so much utility by just putting all this product based information data inside the the transaction right right so you you as an end user you'll get all this stuff already out automated so no you're saving a bunch of time you also would get access to a worldwide audience with instant settlement. So I think that's a way for people to start understanding why this technology is so is so power, powerful and how it's been used to break down some of the barriers that we have with tra traditional systems. It's also removing a lot of the middlemen, which makes the whole process much more efficient, faster, cheaper. Um, what, what else do you, do you think is good for end users to know about to understand the value of these uh, of these technologies, um, yeah, I'd say like the most exciting thing that I think that we're releasing um, in the next few months is we um, have the ability to um, attach augmented rea 
reality experiences up to the product. Um, and this, it's all, it sounds like there's a lot happening, but it's actually just the simple product that we offer where you can attach multiple asset types to the product. Um, mm. But uh, the cool thing is that by putting like these NFT, oh, sorry, augmented reality filters on a product, it means you can start marketing them through social platforms um, like uh, TikTok. TikTok's just opened up a, um, a shop uh, which we're quite excited about. Um, they utilize like products and marketing within TikTok. So um, influencers can s sell products and get inf affiliated marketing commissions and whatnot. So um, yeah, like we're excited about um, bringing our solution to, uh, you know, young and innovative individuals that are looking to sell products across I think we might have lost you again. Can you hear me? Yeah, we just dropped out for a moment. All right, no worries, no worries. So, well, first, I I, I didn't didn't know about this new TikTok store. I might need to to check that that out. Um, do you see like it, it would it be easy for something? like this store that works on the web three to integrate with existing web two platforms or is that a technical challenge um so what we it is a technical challenge and i think like what what i was saying before about you've got to be innovative and creative and and, and find like uh solutions to different problems so like while d store is 100 percent web three um where our solution um offers so many efficiencies um, we've had to work out how we can create uh, less friction points. So um, a part of our default digital twin um, minting technique um, by bringing that and we're creating a, another solution where we'll be able to do like uh, redeemable claim cards. So you can package a, pro uh, a card with a, a product um, and then the user who might not have any Web3 experience, they can purchase the product on, you know, just on a normal Web2 type uh, infrastructure. Um, and they can claim mm -hmm. that digital twin through these claim cards that we're releasing. Um, and and what, what this does is it, it opens up the uh, market so that we're not just selling to Web3 people, but uh, people who have established revenue channels, uh, sales channels, they can sell products um, to like no coiners or people who don't have web three, um, uh, experience. Uh, so this is how, like one of our ways that we're, um, addressing friction points so that, um, everyone can get exposure to the product that we're providing. Um, and yeah, it's, it's super exciting because like at, in a lot of ways like this whole space is moving so fast like it's ridiculous and with ai and you know like everything's going to start moving so much faster um so there's a lot of um yeah you just have to be on on your game like you know or everyone's just moving at such a rapid pace um but yeah um i'd say like this um yeah, it's what we're doing is, is quite exciting. And um, yeah, we I believe it's going to be, you know, a part of the story of NFT 2.0, because the first generation of NFTs, we, we seen like, you know, bought at Yacht Club and a lot of static images. But this next bull run, I do believe that there's going to be a lot more advancements and a lot more utility that comes from, you know, the NFTs as a technology. Um, and yeah, like this is like uh, I guess what what we will be releasing soon will be a creative way to to just expose um, a wider audience to uh, NFTs. Okay, you you touched on a lot of things that I I would I am very very in, interested. First, like yes, the I think the the most common criticism that NFTs have received is that hey, this is only a JPEG. Why are you, people paying so much for them? And it created this sort of bubble where some of the NFTs went up in price like crazy 
and then they crashed more than 90, 95%. Um, but like that, that is one criticism that I think it's it's a correct criticism or it comes from a, a good place, but that doesn't mean that the entire technology of NFTs um, doesn't work because at least to me, and maybe you can correct me if I am wrong or you can tell me your own perspective, but for me, the, the, the valuable thing about an NFT is that it's almost like a digital signature that can be uh, checked to see if it's the right one instantly and without having to to pay for anyone to, to do it. Like if the smart contract needs an NFT from this collection to work and you try to put an NFT that doesn't belong to that connection, it's not going to work. And in, tra in tr traditionally, you would, something like that, you would need to hire someone to check that if that uh, contract is is the right one and it would be slow, it would be expensive. And now we can do it instantly uh, and around the world, like globally without borders. So I, I think that that technology is really powerful and we haven't yet seen the right applications of it. Uh, uh, tell me if I am wrong or if you have a, a different perspective on this. Yeah, no, no, 100% correct um that, that's exactly it like there's just so much utility to it like i think um what really um captured my mind was you know in the height of the bull run we've seen uniswap um so uniswap's a decentralized finance protocol uh, platform for selling and changing tokens um you know they had 11 employees and they were doing four billion dollars in volume um this is crazy and this is the efficiency that comes with with this um, technology. So, it's it's that 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 little that story about Uniswap is what captures the efficiencies of this technology. And like by running like what we're doing, um, it's automated accounting. So like if you sell five products, um, you know like live that there's five products sold out of your supply the money's in you know you, you can um you, you just know exactly when it's happening you don't have to go to your accounting system and then reconcile your bank statements like print out and grab your receipts and put them all together and you know compile them and bring them so you like you know you're representing your accounting system with what actually happened on your banking system because product and product based data is one um there's no need for all that because it's just live it's a real-time um transparent way of knowing exactly the status of your your business um and this is this is so efficient you know um it's ridiculously efficient uh and you own the wealth inside your wallet which is super powerful as well um but yeah these efficiencies um you know it's it's going to be realized um very soon that this is just time saving as a small business um, for you to utilize uh, this technology in your sales because it saves you time. It makes you um, have better data about your customers so you can make better decisions. Um, and it also means that, um, you know, you've, uh, you connect with your uh, customers directly. Um, if your customers, because there's an NFT in their wallet, you know, um, we, we haven't done this yet, but for example, you could, um make them get the next the second version or the upgraded version of that product with a discount if they upgrade um because you know that that wallet purchased a product from you so mm -hmm. you, you could say like if you're a return customer you get 10 percent off when you upgrade your product um and this is all very very easy it's it's not complicated to do so um because that connection is made by the buyer and the seller um and the proof is there on chain that there was a transaction made between both, both parties they can you know verify that only the the buyer of that product gets the and yeah. and that very very beautiful because um i know one of sony's biggest issues were that they um they don't get the communication with the end user because they use a lot of mm. um, third parties to sell their products so they lose the end user 
where um, with our product solution, they um, they can keep connected with that end user, regardless if there's any third parties reselling the product or not, they um, can offer these sort of upgrades. Right, right, because you, you, even if you resell that uh, product with the NFT, it doesn't matter because what Sony needs to know is who's holding that NFT at that particular moment. That's their customer. So, yeah, like from a reseller yeah. perspective, like if you sold in another, in another shop um, the product, then um, Sony would still know who bought, like if they bought, the product was bought out of, let's say Australia, um, a third party shop, then they would still know, Sony would still know who the, who bought the wallet address of the person who bought that product. So, because the NFT would be in there, um, therefore they can, you know, offer them like an upgrade if they needed to, for example, um, where now they don't know who, who gets the Sony product or where the Sony product is. <laughs> right. Yeah. We, we, we started to see like, there's a lot of different, uh, and very useful upgrades that come when you start to you use this uh, technology and some that that you you mentioned at passing and i think that some most people living in places like australia the us or europe maybe for them it's not such a big deal but i i was born in argentina so for me uh we we are very used to our government going into our bank accounts and just having the ability to remove money if they need to or if you're holding dollars mm -hmm. they can automatically co convert them into a local currency which devaluates a lot faster so just by having all of that and also being self-sovereign with your money like that is a huge uh, package that is very very valuable and especially like if you're producing things in argentina and suddenly you have a global audience and you can do uh, commerce in dollars and you can earn in dollars that's also extremely valuable uh, I, I work a lot with people as well in Africa and for them it's very difficult to access dollars in Argentina it's very difficult to get dollars so I see like there's a lot of potential for this technology you know everything that you describe is uh, it's a lot. It's a lot more efficient. It's a lot faster. There's a real direct relationship with the buyer and the seller, and also it adds all this uh, freedom from the financial side, which which makes it so so powerful. And I think that's why that's why we are all so passionate in in this space, and we're all trying to work to get more people on board and more people to understand the value of it, because it it, it is a uh, it's very rare in history that you get at a, a certain kinds of technologies that can create such a paradigm shift between how things used to be done and how things could be done in the future. So I I just want to ask, like, of all these innovation and all these benefits, which ones are the ones that you think are, you are most excited, particularly? Oh, um. <laughs> I think um, the most exciting thing it's well, well, it's really hard to pinpoint it. I think the most exciting thing is that by people getting on this board of it on board with this technology early, they have a chance, an opportunity to create transformative wealth. That's the really like the most exciting thing I think, um, because you know there's going to be so much wealth pouring into this space um and there's opportunity for people who you know who might not have a lot of wealth to create a lot of wealth i know i've seen like um the last bull run I, I um my portfolio increased a lot um and that was great and quite transformative and i think that uh you know regardless whether you put ten dollars in or a hundred dollars or five dollars you still got the potential to get high returns um, by, you know, looking into this technology, getting into an early stage, um, because there's this, um, because there's this wealth that's going to pour into the technology. So 
I think the most exciting thing is for people to be able to change their their life situation through this transforming wealth through this, as you said, paradigm shift. As um, technology goes from you know Web two to Web three, there's a lot of potential there. So I think for me, it's it's the the season of change that's the most exciting thing um, uh, for me, and to be a part of this story where we're watching the world change and it, it's super scary too because like you know like ai is moving at such a fast pace and to be um you know and um you know ai is a part of web3 so oh well web 3.0 there's there's a bit of a, a difference people say web 3.0 encompasses a lot of different technical products and typically web3 people say that web3 is sort of decentralized so there's a apparently there's a big difference between web3 and 3.0 but in the whole like spectrum there's um you know ai is a part of this movement that we're stepping into um and um there's just so much rapid change going on there's just opportunities galore with anyone who's just can just like think with this new technology and apply it to this new world that we're stepping into because um and that whole sector is is just that there's so much opportunities for anyone that uh wants to be creative and is brave enough to take a step yeah i am i am very 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 happy that you that you said that as, as the thing that's exciting you the most it is the thing that's exciting me the most as well is that there's going to be a lot of opportunity for people that maybe they didn't have the right tools or they didn't have, there were not enough opportunities for them in the, let's call it the old world. And now we're, we're venturing into a new world and it's almost like you discovered a new country and you can just move in and start building and there's opportunities for everyone. And I think that if people will get out of this uh, episode, something, especially young, hungry entrepreneurs, it's like there is a lot of opportunity here, a lot of opportunities for everyone. And I, I hope we can inspire people to to jump, to start educating themselves. In fact, like everything that I'm building the Independent Academy is because I, on the one hand, I, I thought there's opportunities that I, thought, I don't think we've ever had. Um, and at the same time, the places where you would traditionally go to get educated they're not doing a good job and things are moving so fast and they can't catch up. Um, like I, I've been in a lot of universities and between the time that somebody proposed a change to the curriculum and that change gets accepted, it's already obs obsolete. So like it, it, it just doesn't work. So yeah. we're trying to build a place for people to take advantage of these opportunities, bring them the education that they need, uh, like, delivered in a way for the 21st century and with the speed of change like so they can they can learn what they need to start going and take advantage of this i think massive opportunity and now you touch on something that it was where i wanted to take the conversation next and we have around 15 minutes or so but i wanted to talk to you about the your thoughts about the intersection of all these different kinds of technologies that are developing and I, maybe at the moment they're they're kind of separate, like blockchain AI seems to be s separate. But uh, what do you think about the convergence of the of these technologies? Because I I believe that they they have to uh, converge at some stage. Yeah, hundred percent. I think like AI is too new. Everyone thinks that it's, its own sector, but um, yeah, it's AI and blockchain. I, I believe hundred percent will marry because they, um, uh, AI is, um, well, it's, it's, it's completely, I guess you could say completely fake because everything's regenerated from past data where, mm -hmm. um, blockchain is proof of current of, of past transactions. So it verifies things. And when we see things like deep fakes, when we see things like um you know you can um auto generate things uh like for example uh i could write a script that ai to generate fake businesses um or i could write a script to say um 
generate me uh, um, a receipt, you know, for a product that I purchased. Um, then people could probably use that receipt to, you know, maybe claim warranties that didn't happen or, you know, I don't know how the future will evolve, but because you can auto generate things in such an accurate way, um, things can be falsified very easily. Mm. Um, like I know uh, the other day I got, um, well, not ne- not technically scammed, but um, I, I, there was the Elon Musk space launch and I was like, oh, this is cool. And then I'm watching it and, and I'm watching it all happen. And I'm like, this is great. Like, I can't believe it. And then Elon starts asking for cryptocurrencies as payment to help in this new world. And I'm like, hey, this sounds like a scam. But, but like, it was a deep fake. And and I was like, wow, this is ridiculous. Um, you know, I, I like, after the, I seen the, the red flags popped up, but this is exactly what's going to happen is we're going to see, like, you know, deep fakes. We're going to see, like, you know, people can with the, uh, um you know the copying of people's voices and whatnot you know you could have your mum call you and ask for money Mm -hmm. and you can you know pay that money because you think it's your mum and and whatnot but um this is how uh ai has the power to be really fake um where blockchain is proof for things and real world transactions happening on chain that's the default value proposition for blockchain so I see them as as marrying and in the way that blockchain will verify real things happened um, to uh, counteract the fraudulent things that can happen through AI. So I see them as um, two powerful technologies that that have to come together to um, like as this Web three world matures. Yes, yes, because I I definitely agree that the. Um... We, uh, I think we are in the, the beginning stages of the rise in deepfakes. I think that's going to become more and more of a problem. And in a way, I imagine that the the more deepfakes happen, the more the need for something like a blockchain or some people refer to it as a time chain to keep track of uh, every, everything that happened. And going back to what we said about NFTs, like if NFTs... Uh, application of the blockchain that allows you to determine if this receipt is the the real one or not. Um, I think that the ability to do that with content is going to be really, really important as the more fake content uh, starts to pop up. Do do you think that's that's the case? Yeah, 100%. Because like... um... You know, if if I wanted to create um, a bank statement to prove something, I could do that very easily um, with AI and not need any like a graphics design. I could do it probably quite easy if I'm as a mature like a individual. But with AI, anyone can do it. You know, um, there's um, but you can't. Um, you could falsify a bank statement, but you can't falsify a transaction on the blockchain because. It's there. It's transparent in a ledger, and anyone can verify that this this thing happened. So, um, yeah, I think there's going to be a rise. Like, we'll see what happens. But as as uh, we mature, we'll I believe that we'll see that um, they'll see blockchain as a way of, of of proving the legitimacy of of transactions and NFTs specifically. Once um, that product based data is in inside the transaction then you know what you purchased at when and where from who and that's um that's where it becomes powerful because if it's just a transaction you're not pro- proving what point what product you purchased you're just proving that money was transferred um and that's not enough information for people to know um like to verify receipts or verify sales mm-hmm. Yeah, no, there's definitely a lot to uh, that. I am personally paying a lot of attention to both worlds. Uh, with Independent Academy, we do a lot of things with AI because, again, we're trying to be agnostic in the kinds of technologies that we that we that we teach, and trying to just pick the the best tool for each job in order to help people uh, do what they want to do, become independent, and bring their ideas to life. And I am 
personally very, very interested in this in intersection of blockchain and AI, because I think they are the two most powerful tools that we have right now. And yeah, I'm, I'm looking at the space very, very closely. I encourage everyone to do the same because I think there's going to be a ton of opportunity there too. And um, yeah, just before we, we finish, we have 10 more minutes. I, I just wanted to ask about what are the future plans for this store? When are you planning to launch? How can people get on board and start using it? I, I personally would like to to use it maybe for our, for our courses or the books that we are uh, about to publish. So if you can give us some information about that, that would be great. Yeah, totally. Um, so we're hoping, we're not releasing any timelines, but like hoping to release it quite soon. Um, we're doing some tests this week, uh, um, just getting some uh, some of the community involved to jump on and, and look for bugs and fault find and see if there's any like friction points. Um, and then we're got a planning to roll out a um, uh, a postcard trial. This will be our first live trial for automated like, like drop shipping. Um, this will be in the next couple of weeks. Um, I think like the best way is to just follow us on Twitter um or x sorry i will release all the information there but like uh once we've done a few trials we're then going to open it up and ask for community members to start trialing to um sell products um and uh we're really looking for people that already have a product um that they sell you know in, in a personal business or, or hobby um that way like it's not like they're um having to generate a product and all that effort that goes into it they might already have something running that they can just we can work with them to digitize and and then sell and and co-market with them um to get feedback because there's a lot of stuff that we can't we need um community support for like you know the issues and challenges that someone let's say from argentina might have by selling a product to someone from america this is a sort of um, information that we need to um get from the community and you know our our vision is for this to be um something that empowers um everyone so we really want this to be um, a community-led initiative um where we're, we're optimizing it so that we can all become self-sovereign in this this time of change um and that you know people who might not have um a lot of money but they might be able to create a product um then they can start generating that um you know that revenue from dstall that they might not have access to so like for example people in argentina they might mm -hmm. be uh yeah have something then they can say like let's just try this and sell it on dstore and see what happens and have the opportunity to to sell um a product and um earn in in, in and acquire crypto yeah, that's that's a, a very very good um, idea. It's a, it sounds very aligned to what we are trying to do, which is to empower people and give them um, or help them take advantage of the opportunities of these new new paradigm shift that we are currently living through. And this whole thing about being um, built around the community, I think that is that is crucial. Is also what we are aiming to to create. Um, which seems to be like a very prominent thing about Web3 is this emphasis around communities. Um, I don't know if you, if, you, if you have some thoughts on that, but it seems like every project in the Web3 world is very, very much community-driven, community-focused. Can you maybe give your thoughts on why you think that's that's the case and why it's important? Oh, um, I, I think it's important because um, it's important because of scale, of, like to scale, like it's um, network effect is very powerful. You know, like if you have um, people that rise up and there's 10 of them um, and they tell their friends, which is like another 10 and all, all of a sudden, you know, you've got a hundred and a thousand and whatnot. It just um network effect is so pay powerful um 
and it's also good because it allows for um, everyone to to have their feedback on a product or a service or or whatnot. And that that data is invaluable. And I think that data is like what we don't capture much in Web two. Like we try and do reviews in Web two, but it's not really efficient. But through social media channels and whatnot and Discord, we're able to hear the voice of the community, and that allows us to optimize and move in the best interest of the community. The community are the ones at the end of the day that, you know, utilize the, the platform or the service. So um, putting something um, in their best interest is in your interest. So it's sort of like, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's good for both, both the, the, I guess the DAO who's creating the platform or, or the service to um yeah have their community's best interests in mind but i like it's just yeah it, it's interesting how it's evolved but i i think it's beautiful and it's an amazing it's just another amazing trait of uh the space we're stepping into yeah yeah definitely definitely and again if we're talking about opportunities for people the ability to just jump into one of these communities and start participating um it's also a great way to get familiarized with the space and start generating opportunities for yourself. Like that, that's what I did when I first started in, in the space. I just joined some DAOs that I thought were doing very interesting things that were aligned with my values. I started participating, I started adding value in whatever way I could and opportunities start coming. They naturally do. <clears throat> so it's, it's also, another change between how things used to be done and how things are done now. And I think there's a lot of opportunity there for people to take advantage of. Um, so Josiah, we're coming to uh, the end. Even like, yeah, yeah, please. Oh yeah. Yep. Yeah. No, no, I was just saying like, um, yeah, like you said, like as an ambassador of a DAO and whatnot, those opportunities are there and you just got to, um, yeah, just take the plunge and just do it reach out to people but um before you know it you can be earning a salary from an international company because you're a community member this is all quite po this is all possible so yeah yes yes definitely definitely, definitely. get involved a hundred percent is is good for the is good for the DAOs. it's good for the project it's good for you like there's a lot of um opportunity there for a symbiotic relationship that benefits everyone and everybody gets to improve and create a better product which will attract more users and it's a in the in the best case scenarios it turns into a very into a cycle that benefits everybody that is involved you know which goes along with what you were talking about the network effects which is that that same thing like every new member of the network benefits the entire network So yeah, we, yes, uh, we're we're getting to to the end now. I just want to say first, thank you for taking uh, the time. I'm sorry for the initial uh, problems that we had. Uh, I think we we managed to to work through them, and we got a very very good uh, conversation. I personally learned a lot, so I'm very grateful that you came here and you gave us your your time, your energy, your attention. It is very appreciated. And if you just want to tell people uh, where, how to get involved with uh, this store to with your community, and and yeah, then then we'll add all those links afterwards as well. Yeah, sure. I think um, we are accepting a few. Uh, our Discord channel will be a closed group, um, and it'll be available to people who purchase products in the future so we can get that feedback loop um but we are taking on some people without purchasing products uh in the early stages like we might cap it around 100 so i can provide a, a discord link to share um it'd be great if we could have some community members that want to get involved um this is a good opportunity for uh ones that might not know where to start just um yeah we'll share your discord channel um in this chat um jump in have a chat and um yeah, if you want to jump on board and start trialing our platform testing, 
if you have a product you too you can um discuss bring that up with us in conversation and we can um see what we can do to get you started um yeah i think that, like i said this will be something that we're only doing now um later on it'll just be only people who have used the, pl the platform but um we're uh we're, we're just going public now so um this is a good opportunity for everyone really wow uh, we i i feel much more grateful now that you decided to 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 do that here um thank you thank you so so much uh i've learned a lot i will use a lot of the content that we that we talked about here to create some some uh, content and link it to this store to help you get a bit more um awareness from us our end and if there is anything we can do to to help you uh even in the future once maybe once you launch if you want to do some announcement or anything or you if you want to come back and we can do uh more of a, of a demonstration of a, how the store works and all of that we'll be more than, than happy to help you in whatever way we can and just saying thank you for for joining us I'll give you say, some minutes to say goodbye and then we'll close the the live feed. So thank you. Awesome. Uh, thank you very much. It's been an honor as well from my end. So. All right. Well, uh, everyone that was here with us again, uh, thank you. Sorry for the initial um, problems that we had. I think we managed to work through them. It's one of the bad things of doing things live, but also I like showing people how you can work around whatever problem comes your way as an entrepreneur i think you have to be ready to do that at any moment and problems always come that you don't don't expect but uh, yeah you have to have that resilience and continue to work through them so i hope that was that was good for all of you and we'll have another episode next week talking with an, another great uh, entrepreneur involved in the this wonderful world of all these new technologies. So we'll see you then. Thank you for joining us and have a good day wherever you are around the world.